This video will guide you through the enterprise provisioning process step by step from start to finish. In the first step, the reseller logs into the service portal and creates the enterprise by clicking on Add Enterprise at the top right of the service portal page. Next, we have to fill in the form with the enterprise name or the company name. So for this demo, I'm just using test company name. We also have to fill in the global administrator's email address. Now, this person will be the one to receive the registration email and grant the consent for the integration to happen. The reseller can also set the user limit depending on the number of users the enterprise wants to configure. For this demonstration, I'll just leave this one to blank so that I'll have a limited number of users that I can configure. There are also other enterprise settings that a reseller can set. Number one, we have the PBX music on hold. So if this is selected, they'll be able to use their PBX music on hold instead of the Teams one. And if the enterprise is savvy enough, they'd also be able to uh, grant consent and access the SIP data when the reseller grants them access to it. A reseller can also request consent for enterprise management. And once the global administrator grants this consent, the reseller can set up most of the provisioning tasks with less intervention from the global administrator. This is really helpful if you want to manage an enterprise and you want to be able to set up everything on your own at the enterprise level. Next is to assign the SBC region and the best practice is to select the region closest to the customer's Azure location. You can also assign multiple SBC region depending on how heavy the traffic of this enterprise customer is. In that case, they can set up multiple direct routes later on. Next, you can also assign the services the enterprise wishes to configure. The availability of the services for you as a reseller depends on what you have. And you can also assign that to the enterprise. So you can assign as many depending on what the enterprise wants. You can mix and match the services. So for this demonstration, we're just going to do PBX configuration. So I'll just use the PBX service. The next step is adding the appropriate PBX type and assign it to the enterprise. For this demonstration, I am doing NetSapiens. And I assign it to my enterprise. And this type of PBX has the option to add new extension. So I will check the box. And once I have everything filled, review the process, make sure that you have all the correct information. And once everything's correct and good to go, click on Submit. You will be routed back to the reseller dashboard where you can see the status of the enterprise. So as you can see, it's saying that the enterprise registration is pending. So this process now did generate an email to the global administrator. And now the task will shift from the reseller to the global administrator. So the global administrator opens the email registration and from there, they will be able to register the enterprise by clicking on the complete button. And once they click on complete, they will be presented with the initial consents that they have to grant consent to or permission to. So all they have to do is just check the box for grant consent and then just click on accept. You can also read through the permissions one by one by just click on the drop down arrow. So they click on accept. So initially there'll be three sets of permissions that they have to grant consent to. So this is the second one. So they just click on accept. And this is the third one. And if they want to read through all the details of the permission, they can click on the drop down menu. And once they have all the three permissions granted, they'll be routed back to the enterprise dashboard where they have additional actions and consenting that they need to do. The most important thing here is allowing management by service providers. So they can grant this one first. In that case, the reseller will be able to take over the configuration process or the provisioning process. So they'll be presented with the same uh, consent, so they just have to click on accept and grant consent. So the reseller will be able to perform most of the task with less intervention from the global administrator. So there's the 
confirmation that the consent for allowing management by service provider or the reseller is already completed. Now the reseller can go back to the service portal, refresh, and they'll be able to access the enterprise. They click on the enterprise and basically they'll have the same option. They'll see the same option as the enterprise admin would see in the enterprise portal. So for this configuration, for this uh, integration, we will be processing uh, the users or we will be integrating the users as the resellers. So we'll be on the service portal. Now the next step is to set up direct routing. So we click on direct routing. And to set up direct routing, it's important to pay attention to the available licenses. In this demonstration, I'm using a non-inclusive license, Office 365 Business Premium. I have 22 of that available. So I'll have to purchase the add-on phone license. We needed at least one available for each license in order for us to configure direct routing. If you're using E5, G5, or any of those inclusive licenses, then you will only see one license list here on this screen. So now we can proceed and set up direct routing, assign the available voice route, click on complete voice route, and the system will then verify to make sure that you have the valid connection and the correct licenses. And once the verification is complete and all check, you can click on complete direct routing and you will be routed back to the dashboard page. From here, you will see the status of your direct routing configuration. You'll have access to your direct routing domain, the voice route where it is assigned to, the validation, as well as the status of the calling. So depending on the Microsoft's network, this can take up to one hour. You just have to wait for a green check under the validation and the green check as well for the calling enabled. So once everything's green, you will get a notification in the dashboard that direct routing has been configured. Plus, you will see as well the gateway or the SBC region where the direct routing domain is assigned to. The global administrator will receive an email as well of the status of your direct routing. So everything that is done in the portal, the global administrator will get an email notification about that. So from here, you can instruct them as well to go to their Microsoft Admin Center and take out the license from the direct routing user. So this user was created when that complete direct routing button was clicked. So this was automatically created, and this will be the one responsible to automate the calling processes. So it's fine if we take out the licenses, so you can go ahead and assign them to like actual Teams user. And once you have unassigned the licenses to the direct routing user, it is important that we don't delete this user or else it will break everything and we will start over from scratch. Hence the reason why we call it do not delete at your direct routing domain. So once the direct routing user is already unlicensed, you'll be able to go back to the portal and continue with the configuration process. So the next step here is uploading phone numbers. So as a reseller, it is your responsibility to upload phone numbers and assign it to the enterprise customer who will be utilizing that. So all you have to do is just go to the phone numbers on the left side, click on upload phone numbers. And first you can download the sample file, file format, which is in CSV. So it looks like this. Column A, you put in the country code. Column B, you put in the actual telephone number. For columns C and D, you say true if that DID or phone number is capable of having voice or SMS. Say false if it is otherwise. For fax service, we don't support this yet, so just say false for that one. Once the file is saved, you go back to the portal, fill in the carrier name. So for the carrier name, you can type in your own carrier in here, or you can put in a description of the voice carrier DID that you're trying to upload. So right there, description. So for this demonstration, I'm just going to say for test. If the same DID is enabled for the SMS service, you have to click on the drop down menu and select the correct SMS carrier profile. 
Next is assigning the phone number or the DIDs to the enterprise. So just click on the drop down, look for the enterprise where you want it to be assigned, and look for the file that you've saved with all the uh, DID information and the DID capabilities. Once you have that in, you click on upload. And you'll get a notification that the phone numbers are uploaded. So you will see the phone number, the carrier for the voice, the enterprise where it is assigned to. And later on, you will see the users where the DIDs are assigned to. You also see the capability. So as you can see, we only have the telephone icon because this um, phone number is just configured for the voice service. Next, we have the PBX setup. So that's the next step here is to configure the PBX. So click on PBX and then click Add PBX at the top right. And from here, you'd be able to configure your PBX settings. So first, you click on the PBX type. So depending on what's assigned to the enterprise. So earlier, I picked um, NetSapiens for my PBX type. So that's available for me on the drop-down menu. PBX location, you can put in a description. So if you want to add multiple PBXs in the future, you'd be able to distinguish which one is that. Put in the PBS DNS lookup type and other settings like your SIP domain and the proxy domain and other features or settings that your PBX may support can also be modified on this screen. Once you're satisfied with all your data and your entry and once all the settings are correct, go ahead and click on save settings. And this will route you back to the PBX page where you can see the domain of the PBX that you configured, the location, as well as the PBX type. Get a notification as well that it's successfully configured. Once we're done with direct routing, adding phone numbers, configuring PBX, the next step is to actually configure the Teams user. This is now where we marry the Teams user to the actual phone extension, so this integration will happen. So once you click on users, you will see all the Microsoft Pod users with proper licensing. We have to make sure that the user has the correct licensing. You will see that on the license details on the right. You just have to click on Setup PBX user to start with the integration. Now you have to assign a user the PBX location. So this is the one that we built earlier. Just wait for the status bar to load. The next step is assigning the voice route. So the voice route here will be um, the SBC region or the voice route we created. And then pick the Teams user where you want the integration to happen. Then depending on the SIP user or the telephone information that you want to assign to the user, go ahead and enter all of those in this page. So I'm just entering the phone credentials of this user. Also assign the DID. So if the DIDs are pre-selected, you can click them on the drop-down menu. If it's not there, you can just type it in and, gen and then hit enter so that you can assign the DID to the user. SIP authentication ID is just similar to the SIP user. Put in the SIP password and confirm. And once you're happy with all the information, and once they're all correct, you click on save user. And this will take you back to the dashboard page and will show you the status of the user. Again, depending on Microsoft's network, it may take some time for this validation and this registration to complete. So what we're aiming here is a green PBX registration and a green Teams registration. You'll also see a notification at the top right that you have successfully configured the Teams user for the PBX integration. So not only that, the global administrator will get another notification stating that the enterprise user is provisioned, and then it will tell them which user was provisioned or was configured for the service in the portal. This process can also be done in bulk if you're working with enterprise with a lot of Teams user and they want to configure all of those Teams user to the PBX. You just click on bulk upload, then for the user type, depending on what's available for this enterprise you supply the user type so for this demonstration we're doing pbx you also assign the voice route to the users that you wish to upload in bulk you select the pbx location where you want these users to be 
And if you don't have the file format for the bulk upload yet, you can click on sample file format. This is what it looks like in column A, put in the Teams user that you want the integration to be. And then column B will do the zip user that you want to tie up to the Teams user. The phone number, disable voicemail, say true and false for that. Zip authentication, put in the password. If there's no portal login information, and um, password as well as the MAC address, you just leave those field blank. What's important is columns A to F. And once you have that saved, you look for the file, upload it in the portal. Once everything is filled in, you click on upload. And again, you will be taken back to the bulk user upload validation. So from here, our system will validate the file that you've uploaded and make sure that all the information are correct. So if we get a green check mark for each of the user that you're trying to upload, you then click on submit. And once it is submitted, it will take you back to the dashboard showing you the status of PBX registration as well as the Teams registration of those users that you have uploaded in bulk. So as soon as those two are already green, just wait for those to register. And you get a confirmation too that the bulk upload was completed and since everything's green and ready to go that means the configuration process is already complete for all of the teams user if the enterprise would want to add more they just have to make sure that the user has the proper licensing and again the global administrator will get an email of the bulk upload done for the enterprise and it will tell them which users were configured for whatever service they, they configured from the portal so since everything is set and all the users are configured we can then instruct the users to sign into teams so from there they can check if the dial pad is already coming up so i'm going to log in as the sean davis user in here so this is Teams. I have the user logged in. Now I'm going to click on Calls on the left side. And from there, I can see my dial pad and I can see the phone number assigned to my user. It's the same thing in the portal. So that means the integration already kicked in and the user is now ready to receive call and place calls. Thank you and have a great day.